So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory. We're here at the Long Island premiere of the documentary on family law reform, family courts, casualties of war, with uh, the director, producer, Yaya McLean, who flew in here today from Atlanta just to be here. And as you can see, we've got a huge crowd of people coming in at the box office, all lined up. Uh, we're expecting, uh, actually, we're expecting it to be sold out. We're going to hope we have enough seats. we got about 400 seats here in the uh, theater. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of intro before the uh, film, talk about... Uh, what the film is about and uh, why Yaya did it. And then after the film, we'll do a little bit of a question and answer. Yaya, thanks for coming into New York. And you're originally uh, from New York, so you're familiar with the area. So uh, tell everybody why you started the, uh, why you did this movie, uh, Casualties of War. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks for having me. And yes, it feels great to be back at home in New York. And the reason that I did this film is because I went for a whole year without being able to see or talk to my son. And I knew that it, something had to be done. I went to court and I was labeled all different types of names. I was meant to see therapists and do all types of things that I should never have had to go through. And I just automatically assumed that this is what the system does to a black man. This is the way they break up a black family. And so I was like, this can't be right. But then I was introduced to a gang of white men that were going through this as well. And if you watch the documentary, you see the majority of the people in the film are white. So I was quickly educated to learn that it wasn't a race thing. It had nothing to do with that. In fact, the only color that really matters is money. And so that... That began my journey. So I traveled across the country and I interviewed people from all walks of life, rich, poor, celebrities, not celebrities, men, women, children, it didn't matter. And I learned so much and I evolved to, to I, I learned so much about the corruption in the system and I evolved. And so the film started out being labeled Casualties of War, Women and the Regime because it was a woman that did this to me, and the majority of the time, it's a woman that does this to the men. But as I evolved from thinking that it was just a black thing to learning that it doesn't matter about the color, I also learned that it didn't matter of the gender. So the name still sticks because it was a woman that did this to me, and the majority of the time, it is a woman that does this. But I learned that it happens to women as well. So therefore, I even tried to change the trailer because I, I had the trailer cut one way where it looked like I was, some people say I was bashing women, but I'm not. It was just statistics don't lie. But after learning how much it happens to women, I, I cut the trailer differently to put women in front so that they could see right up front that this goes both ways. I mean, I love women, you know. I'm on, you've been, you've been, you're on your fifth marriage. I'm on my fifth marriage. <laughs> and I was raised by a single mom. My mother raised three boys right here in New York, in Jamaica, Queens, on her own. So I'm not saying that single women can't raise a child, but statistics don't lie. And so this film is not about bashing women. This film is about bashing the corruption in the court system and raising awareness because... I believe that if the masses gets behind this, that's where we can evoke change. I learned that I was like, I can't do my perspective on it. I can't just do my take. So I had to do a documentary so that it could be stats and, and things that are vetted, you know. And what I expected was, I expected people to come out and support to learn about it. But what I really expected was the people to come out and see that they're not alone. Because a lot of us go into this and we feel that we're alone. And I, I want other people to know that there's people that are there to help you. For me, this was therapy. Doing this documentary, it was therapy. It saved me a lot of money. It taught me a lot. 
it, it taught me a whole lot. So it taught me about what's to come, what can happen, what to expect. So that when I went to courtrooms, I knew what to expect. I was better equipped on how to stand up and talk back to the judges. I was able to stand up and, and really fight for my rights. Being here today with over 200 people and meeting a lot of activists here on Long Island, the networking is important because you need to get a whole network of people to support you, to bounce ideas off of. People truly understand it because nobody, if somebody hasn't gone through this system, they have no, no idea, idea, no idea what they're in for and you really can't take their advice. How many people say, hey, yeah, yeah, just stay out of court and be done with it already. Right, right. I wish it was that easy. Right, right. So, uh, so we're going to go into the film in a few minutes. I just want to catch a few people who are out here in the lobby and, and ask them what brought them out here today. Then we'll do an introduction at the film, of course, for copyright reasons. We can't show the, uh, the film, but we're going to show the trailer. Andy, in fact, let's go to the trailer of Casualties of War now. In the case of divorce or separation with the child involved, the women run to the court, the regime, the system put in place to create a perpetual custody battle or perpetual divorce for the pure sake of financial gain. This doesn't just happen to men, this also happens to women. Mothers are alienated as well. I'm personally a victim of a, a corrupt family law uh, system. Most often fathers, but also mothers, they reduce us down to visitors to justify child support order. And when they justify child support order, the state then receives federal funding through what's known as Title IV-D of the Social Security Act. Which was amazing to me because I paid over $494,000 to her. Parental alienation is such a ubiquitous problem that it has taken family law court, which was set up to help children, and it has now turned it into a business. It is a $50 billion a year industry. Daughter died. No one told me. Still collected child support from me. She dug her fingernails into my arms, which her fingernails were like this long. Let's go, Sarah. Come on, sweetie. Come on, let me hold you. Yeah, I understand, sweetie. You know, I know a lot of you are going through the very same things that I'm going through right now. Just hold your head up. I spent 15 years in prison because I didn't have my biological father there to influence me. Anything you want to say, being accused of shooting a cop, killing him. The society not letting me see my son, I lash out with somebody that didn't, didn't deserve it. 85% of youths in prison were raised by single moms. I haven't seen my son since November. Like I said, I got one ain't seen in 15 years. I haven't seen my kids since December 2013. I've been on house arrest for two years now for wanting to be in my daughter's life and being a father. I've been confined to my home for two and a half, well, going on two years. I haven't seen my daughter since January 12, 2013. I get an order saying that I showed up to court and gave my babies to this man who had knifed me all up. As the President of the United States, I will do everything I can to address this inequality that in fact does exist. Here are approximately 100 to 150 million people that's alienated in America. And as a result, it is affecting everyone in one way or another. This has to change. Casualties of war, women and the regime. Uh, I, I would rather save the child than, than worry about paying child support. And you're not seeing your daughter now because she ran away. You still paying child support? Still paying child support. So who's getting the child support? Nobody's taking care of your daughter. Her, her mother is, and it, or, or she's sitting in abeyance. I don't know. Right. I have no idea. I don't even talk to her mother anymore. Right. Well, that's sad, and that the courts, you went to the courts for help, and they didn't help you. So uh, I hope you get something out of the film, and uh, thank you for coming out, and good luck with thank your you. daughter. Uh, I've actually seen the posts on Facebook, yes. you know, about how, you know, how you're grieving, how much, uh, how much you miss your daughter. But, uh, I mean, who else can you go to? If you can't go to the courts for help, where do you go? You can't. I, I do... Um, I try to speak to the judges and I tell them, why don't you listen to the children too, instead of listening to the parents, instead of listening to the father, the, the petitioner, or the respondent. Uh, we got we to hear Frank Vetro. Uh, he's the host of the uh, Frank Vetro Show. Is that what it's called? Yeah. 
How did you come up with that name? Yeah. Pretty damn creative, isn't it? Three weeks. <laughs> that took me three weeks to think of that. I was up all night. But Frank, Frank, I'm, I'm really glad that you came out. We didn't speak, but I appreciate that you that you came out. You promoted our show on your radio show on W uh, L I N Y. You promoted it tirelessly. But it's important because uh, although Frank's not involved in the family court system, he is was involved and still is involved in the court system. And he's been a tireless activist. He wrote a he wrote a book. Yep. Tell, tell us about the book. Book standing on principle, more about the criminal system and the injustices in the criminal system. A lot of similarities, you know, what goes down in the, the, the pattern that the court system uses to take people down and cover up and the innocent suffer. Uh, so there's parallels to the family court, even though I'm not that familiar. It's one of the reasons I'm here, Gary, and re one of the reasons I had you on my show was to was to learn more about the family court system. I'm interested. I can't wait to see what's going on with the documentary. Okay, and we have somebody else here. And what is your name? My name is Dolores. And Dolores, what, uh, what brings you out here to see casualties of war? Well, I happen to be a victim, and my daughter happens to be a casualty. Um, she is being kept uh, from parent alienation from me and her family and her sister for six years now. And family court uh, is the culprit of doing so, as well as the law guardian involved, CPS involved, and I'm here to support all the other families that have the same similar situation as me. And uh, I still continue to fight for my daughter's rights for now six years now. And uh, parental alienation is a big topic in the film. It's a huge problem. That's when one parent turns a child against another parent for no reason. Most of us don't understand it because it is counterintuitive to think, why would a child be turned against a parent? The way I explain it, when they say, how can this happen? They love their parent. If a cult leader can take absolute strangers and get them to kill people or to kill themselves. What do you think a parent can do when they try to destroy the other parent? Now, a lot of people get mad at their spouse for doing it. And believe me, they're pieces of shit for doing it. I love them to go to jail. But the judges are accomplices in this because they allow it to happen. And this is incremental. They start off by missing visitation, saying bad things. But the more they realize that nothing is going to happen, it gets worse and worse and worse. And what Dolores just said was how it extends. Listen, somebody could say maybe she's a bad woman. Why aren't they talking to the rest of her family. There is no explanation because alienation is not normal. Even children who are in relationships where they are actually abused by a parent, when they talk to them with Child Protective Services, they still want to see that parent. So I thank you for, uh, for coming out and I hope you get something out of the film. Yes, I hope so too. Just want to tell everybody out there, uh, parents, do not give up the fight. Uh, that's what they're afraid of. You know, we have to stand strong for our children. Our children are counting on us to let them know that we are still here for them. We still love them. We're never going to leave. We're never going to give up. You know, this ongoing terroristic act that's happening onto our children and our families has got to stop. I see we have here with us uh, Hector Gavilla, who's one of the up-and-coming politicians here on Long Island. Just had his first run for office in Suffolk County. County legislator. Nobody knew the name Hector Gavilla before, yet he came out and he got over 40% of the votes up against big, big money and a person who's been in politics for nearly her whole life. So uh, I, I'm, I appreciate that Hector has come out today to show support. And Hector, have you ever had experience in a family court? Yes, I had a terrible experience with a judge that you and I both know very well. Right, that would be uh, Judge Blydenberg. That's correct. And the current system definitely has to be revised because it's really unfair. So for the people watching, Hector, when you get elected, I didn't say if, when you get elected, are you going to fight to change the system? Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, we have a system where the one spouse can claim false information about the other spouse, and it just keeps going on and on and on, and it makes it very expensive for the, uh, the parties to get divorced. And, uh, you know, the attorneys also know uh, what we have because, uh, you know, one of the first things they ask for is to show how much money, the net worth statements. Uh, so then what they do is they just keep bilking you, putting you on a retainer, and just having conferences one after the other. So it really has to be improved. So, you know, two, uh, Hector just uh, brought up two very good points. Number one, when you go to an attorney, the first thing they do is they say we need a net worth statement. It's bullshit. They don't need it. They want it because they want to see how much money they can screw you out of. If you go in there and fill out your net worth statement, you got $50 in the bank, you're out the door. They don't want to see you but they know what you have, so you're already stacked against you. The second thing that Hector is referring to, orders of protection, we call that in the industry the silver bullet, because if you want to get your spouse out of, out of the house and get an upper hand in court, you go to court, they give them out like candy. We have absolute freaking nut job judges here, like Judge Arlen Spinner, who's a nutcase. You had somebody who went in there and uh, left a poster at his son's house, Michael Gilligan, saying to his son that he loves him, and Judge Spinner gave him an order of protection where he didn't see his son for eight months and missed Christmas. These order of protections given out like candy, 
saying that your constitutional rights are taken away. It's got to stop, and we need to start prosecuting people who commit perjury and get these false orders of protection. Because once they start, you keep going down this road, and it does put you at a disadvantage because people say, oh, well, there's smoke, there's fire. But they usually, I would say 95% of the time, they're a bunch of crap. You get people who've been married 10, 15 years, never had a problem. All of a sudden, they're getting divorced, and now the person's a spousal abuser. It's a bunch of crap, and I think that's what uh, you're referring to. Well, well also, also what I would refer to is that, you know, a spouse, you know, typically could be the wife, will make a claim that the husband is making more money than they actually are. Right. And even though you may show proof of uh, tax returns, uh, you know, uh, W-4 and all, and all that, uh, still the judge will sometimes side with uh, that person and claim that you're lying. And now it's up to you to show proof, even though you've showed proof. Many of you know uh, Dr. Carlos Rivera, who's standing here to my left. We'll have him say a few words also. Uh uh, I guess before, you want to do before? Yeah, yeah. Just, Let's give him a, a couple. Uh, let, let him say a few words before we uh, introduce the producer and start the movie. Get a little choked up. Hey, hold on. Just want to say thank you uh, to many of you guys out here. Miss you. Love you. Thanks. So, uh, just hold that mic for a second for us. Yeah. And, and, I know this is, uh, you know, it's, hard, it's obviously very emotional. For me, I've been out of the system. I was in it for 11 years, and I've been out for a few years. So I know Carlos, uh, this is very emotional because, unfortunately, he's still right in the middle of it. And, uh, unfortunately, fa still facing another six months uh, incarceration. So, um, you know, we can all feel his pain. And, but I think it's, it, you know, it means a lot to him. I know when he was sitting in the lobby that so many people came out and showed how much they care and, uh, and love him and want, wish the best for him. So, uh I'll say that for Carlos. Hey, no, that's appreciate it. Thank that, you. That, that's what he's thinking. Hold yeah. that mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, and I just want to get, introduce really quickly the producer, director of the show, uh, who made the night possible, uh, Yaya McLean. And uh, just briefly, Yaya, for those of you who don't know, like me, because I hate sports, uh, Yaya was a two-time, is a two-time world champion boxer. Um, he's also a movie producer and actor. But if you read his resume, when he started to write this film, what caught me is he said that although he's been in the ring with a lot of tough people, this was the fight of his life, the family court system, and it's the toughest fight that he's had, but you know what? He's a fighter and he's fighting back. So, uh, Yaya, thank you for coming out from Atlanta for the day. Yeah. You have to say a word before? You want to say okay. um, I think they've all said it all, but I just want to thank you all. This is a, a great turnout, especially for it to be a weekday, and, um, you know, I'm I'm just excited, and like he said, you know, I've been a boxer all my life. I'm from Jamaica, Queens. I'm an ex-Marine, and I've been in the streets for a long time in my life. And this is by far the hardest fight that I've ever been involved in. So I want to thank you all for coming out, and I hope that you all can learn something and spread the word. Thank you. Why the title, Woman and, Women and the Regime? Is this a woman bashing movie? And I think you'll see at the beginning of the movie, it starts out a lot differently than it does halfway through and through the end. But because I know that's going to be the first question that everybody is going to ask, why the title? And is this all about women bashing men? I'm going to ask Yaya to, uh, to answer that question. So the, the film, the title Casualties of War, came about because... Of course, it was a woman that did this to me, and because the majority of the time, it is the woman that does this to the man, but as we see, men are doing this to women more and more these days as well. However, I would like to say that when I first got involved with this, this was not gonna be about women, this was not gonna be, uh, this was, to, when I first got involved, this was, in my eyes and from my world, this was another way for the white man to bring the black man down, to tear the black family apart. That's what it was in my eyes. And I quickly learned that that was not the case. And as you see, the majority of the film had white people in it. And I met these guys, and I started traveling around the country interviewing all sorts of people, black, white, Chinese, it didn't matter the color, women, men, children. And I quickly learned that it wasn't about race and that it also wasn't about men. 
it was about money. So it happens to women as well. The title, Casualties of War, Women and the Regime, it stayed that way because, again, it was a woman that brought this to me, but because this was something that was so dear to me because I went a whole year without seeing my son. And my son is my baby. And just like this movie became my baby because this is not something that I ever said, I'm going to make a documentary about parental alienation. Not at all. This was something that I had to do. This was something that organically grew as I went through my court proceedings and went through all the BS that we just finished watching. So this is how this came about. Yes, good evening. My name is Paula. And first of all, I would like to congratulate everybody who was involved in this project. So my question for you will be, it's a very sensitive question, so if you could answer, I would appreciate it. If not, it's fine. Are the uh, people who make the mental health assessment corrupt as well? Because I don't really trust them, and I believe they have a double standard in that case, too. That not only um, mental health evaluators, just whomever, you know, any type of evaluator. Um, I had a, 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 a doctor, psychiatrist, make a statement and sent it into the courts in writing that my son was sexually molested on my watch, but this doctor had never met me and made that and brought that into the courts. So they will do, and I found out that the doctor was a partner of her lawyer. So, you know, everything goes on. There's corruption all around. My heart and soul is united with everyone in this room who is fighting in the court system, as I am, for eight and a half years. But there has to be, like, a unified solution and how we get these judges actually removed from the bench. There is no accountability here. No accountability. And the police are involved. But we have to make an amendment to the Constitution. We have to repeal these acts. And the only way we can do that is by raising the awareness. So once we get everyone that comes together, like I was saying earlier, you know, my pinky can only do so much damage. But if I make this fist, it's a whole different story. And that's what we have to do. If, if I could just add, to the, the big thing is take the money out. And how do you take the money out? But by like what they did in uh, Scandinavia, which is a, a presumption of shared parenting. Take all this fighting out of the system. And that really, if there's no money, it's going to go away. You know, I, I, tell the, I tell the story all the time. You know, as president of Americans for Legal Reform, people come to me all the time. Problems with their divorce. They can't believe how much money they're spending. They've been in court for 10, 15 years. I've never had one poor guy from Wyandanche come to me and tell me his divorce dragged on for 10 years. Because they have no money. If there's no money, the divorce ends and people settle. So the solution is to take the money out of the system, including Title 4D, Title 4E, take out this New York State thing where one parent wins and one parent loses and create this problem. Uh, as far as attorneys, how about a flat rate for divorce so there's no incentive to make the divorce drag on over and over again? There's something wrong with the system where divorce lawyers make more than surgeons who save your life. The culture of divorce is uh, disturbing to me, but what we need to do is ra raise awareness awareness and what that that's going to start at your level you speak to your friends you speak to your neighbors you go on social media yaya said i'm going to make a documentary and i've heard a lot of people talk about making documentaries and making books yaya just boom did it one of the answers is to organize and we have a state association it's called Daphne. uh and back in 2006 or 7 uh we worked on legislation to uh get the presumption of equal parenting and by concerted effort of a lot of people, we had quite a number of signatures, and we were able to move the bill forward, uh, quite a number of signatures of assembly people. We were able to move the bill forward to get a hearing, and there hadn't been a hearing for 20 years uh, before that. So now the legislation is dead for lack of membership and lack of involvement and lack of people calling on legislators to co-sponsor the bill. So the bill's still out there under a, a new number because the numbers change every time they have an election and, and vote in and out uh, new legislators. But that's part of the answer. The bills to get equal parenting are not being discussed now. They're completely dead. So my suggestion is for people, if they want to start to get involved somewhere, is get involved with Fafni. Uh, I'll help organize with that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the directors. And... Uh, 
we uh, we can call on legislators and get them to sign. We can also publish what they're in favor of and what they're against uh, come election time and build the cause that way. Another thing that wasn't mentioned is the presumption of uh, of a of a, mandi- of a uh, mediation to that it wouldn't be required, but you'd have to at least put one toe in the room of, for mediation and one toe out. The states that have mandatory mediation or a presumption for mediation uh, have reduced their caseloads 90%. The state of Washington wasn't able to do it on a state level, so they did it county by county. And they claim they could never handle the caseload if they went back to uh, litigation as the solution. So that's another thing. I am Dolores. I have, my daughter has been a casualty of war now for six years. I have been in the appellate state. Now it's my third time, still awaiting for a decision. I've taken my petition myself because I've paid five attorneys, $50,000, who said that I had a case but did nothing for me except support the neglectful CPS system, the uh, neglectful law guardian, all who play in it together. Um, Forensic evaluators, um, they do change their words. Uh, It's happened to me, it's happened to my family. Um, Change starts with Congress. As I was told by a CPS caseworker one day, she says, you want change? Talk to Congress. CPS is a governmentally funded agency. Until we make a change in the big house, it's going to continue this vicious cycle. Okay, so we just uh, finished the filming. Unbelievable. It's almost totally sold out. I think there was five empty seats left in the theater. We sold just under 300 uh, tickets to it. Pretty pretty amazing job. So uh, we have here with James Kelly, who just saw the movie. Uh, Jim, what did you think of the movie? The children should have a right to be able to freely love both parents. And from what I'm seeing, that's just not the way it is. So what do what you think of the movie that you just saw, Casualties of War? Uh, It's more about how I feel. I'm physically ill. Um, It was very upsetting, all of the emotion, and it really brought brought it home how horrible the system is. Uh, Yeah, well, I did know a lot about the uh, issues with uh, family court before, but this film really brought it to the forefront and gave a lot of examples of what's going on. And basically, with all the talk of Congress investigating collusion these days with the Russians, they don't need to go to Russia to really find the where the real problem is, and that's the collusion in the family court system, and that's really what's hurting uh, most people in this country, families and children uh, especially. I think it's uh, it's it, it's it's very well done. I think it's sad that uh, a movie like this has to even exist, and it's sad that we all have to be here, but. Given this is the world we live in, I think it's uh, it's great that we bring these topics to uh, the awareness of the general public. It's just a constant. It's a story that goes it goes on and on, and you don't know uh, what's happening until it slams you in the face. And that is something that we need to educate. We need to educate law students. We need to educate uh, our children. I was a product of alienation, and then when things happened to me, I didn't even know it. It never even occurred to me. Watching this reinforces that we have a mission, and we have to educate, and we have to stop this happening, stop these types of things from happening before it does. My name is Paula Valencia, and I was very uh, pleased and very happy, very um, satisfied with the documentary, with the job that you guys have worked, uh, all of you have performed. It was very touching, very moving, and I came here just to give you support and eventually be um, participate more in the events and everything that goes on, and hopefully try to be part little by little and have unity so all of us can just find a change in the law system and the family court. It was awesome, man. Uh, again, great job to you guys, man. You guys really, you had the people out there. It was packed house, biggest crowd to date.